Like, what does that well, mean? What else am I going to do? Like, I'm oh by my myself. God! Sometimes finding love means breaking all the rules, even if you're a contestant on The Bachelor. I am so not perfect, I'm not even close. Colton Underwood may have hopped a fence, but could Peter Weber be a part of the most controversial season yet? This is so freaking weird. Kissing in front of contestants. One of the biggest challenges contestants on The Bachelor face is scoring some alone time with Peter Weber. One-on-one -on -one moments are hard to come by, especially in the beginning, and it's considered polite to hold off on physical affection until you're alone. Well, usually. Just try telling that to Peter, who is relentless in his quest to score as many smooches as possible during his season. According to Wells Adam, kissing in front of other contestants is against the rules. While it's not enough to get you kicked off the show, Wells claims that it creates an uncomfortable situation for everyone involved. And things definitely got tense when Peter couldn't resist locking lips with multiple contestants during their photo shoot in Costa Rica. <laughs> puckered up for Victoria F. and Hannah Ann, which caused a great deal of jealousy. Former Bachelor Ben Higgins even said that this might have been the most awkward date in the history of the show. It can be hard not to play favorites, but kissing in front of the other contestants can seem downright cruel. Ben admitted that he wasn't the perfect Bachelor, but at least he didn't break this rule on his season. Peter, on the other hand, doesn't seem to be slowing down on smooching anytime soon. Inviting Hannah Brown Peter Weber seemingly struggles to control his lips, but there was one contestant he managed not to kiss, even though he really wanted to. Yes, we're talking about former bachelorette Hannah Brown, who didn't choose Peter despite the fun times they shared in the windmill during her season. Because of you two, nobody will ever look at a windmill the same. <laughs> When he left the show, Peter thought they were saying goodbye for good and had no clue that she'd show up on The Bachelor. Hey. What? No! See, is she dating him? Hannah arrived on the show to host a group date but couldn't bring herself to leave and abandon a second chance to be with Pete. Even though she was supposed to be gone for good, he had a hard time saying goodbye. He admitted to feeling confused and considered giving their relationship another chance. But in the end, Peter forced himself to cut ties, not because he was scared of breaking the rules, but because he was scared of breaking his heart again. I wanted to kiss her, yes. That's what I was feeling. That's what I wanted to do. He confessed that he's still trying to figure out what he really wants, but knew he couldn't move forward if he kept looking back. Bringing back contestants. Once someone is eliminated from The Bachelor, they're supposed to be gone for good, but apparently Peter missed out on that memo. Some contestants have left the show and then returned, but usually the rose ceremony is the final goodbye. Maybe Peter was just inspired by his time on The Bachelorette when fellow contestant Luke Parker struggled to stay away. According to host Chris Harrison, the producers weren't thrilled about Luke coming back, and if it was up to them, he would have remained an ex-contestant. Things got awkward during Peter's rose ceremony when he felt conflicted about contestant Alea Benavidez. I don't think she's here for a relationship with Peter. Yeah. I think it's for the rose and to be on TV. Sydney Hightower, Victoria Paul, and some of the other women agreed that she came across as totally fake. Alea is manipulative. She's fake because she thinks that this is a game. When Victoria told Peter that Alea had asked her not to disclose that they knew each other before the show, he ended up sending her home only to bring her right back. Alea, you accept this rose? He asked Alea to return after she cleared her name and accused Victoria of lying. I was in physical shock that she could even say that. But even though Peter broke the rules to bring Alea back, he ultimately decided there was just too much drama and eliminated her for a second time. Night one, kissing record. Contestants on The Bachelor frequently talk about trying to find a connection, and it seems like Peter is trying to connect his lips to as many other sets as possible. We already talked about how he broke the cardinal rule about not kissing in a group setting, but that's not the only mandate he's broken during his season of The Bachelor. He also broke the record for kissing the most people during his very first night on the show. This Bachelor actually counted how many women he smooched, and the number might surprise you. Um, think I kissed 12 the first night. According to Peter, he's not trying to break rules and records, but he just can't help it when he feels an instant connection to someone. Just so you realize what quantity of kisses we're talking about here, keep in mind that in the previous season, Colton Underwood locked lips with only three women the first night. Saying the L word. 
It's no secret that relationships on The Bachelor tend to progress a lot quicker than they do in real life. But even when we keep in mind the fast pace of reality show relationships, it's still unusual for people to drop the L word early on. Everyone claims to be on the show looking for love, but falling for someone takes a ton of getting to know them, and that's not always easy in this format. However, it seems like Peter isn't worried about saying too much too soon. He's already used the word love when talking about a contestant. I don't know if I have to fully move on to feel that love with someone else. I don't know right now." At least this time he didn't engage in over-the-top affection in front of a group, but fans were still stunned when he confessed his feelings to contestant Madison Pruitt. They enjoyed a one-on-one -on -one date in Lima, Peru, and Madison told Peter that she sees a future with him. I have really strong feelings for this guy and see something really special in him. Even though Peter admitted that they may differ on the topic of faith, he confessed some pretty deep feelings. I know that I'm falling in love with you. But she wasn't the only person Peter opened up to before the final rose ceremony. I'd rather you not say that to her unless you truly mean it. Even though Hannah Ann's dad specifically told Peter not to use the word love unless he's 100% committed, he just couldn't resist. I can honestly say that I am falling in love with you. According to Peter, he doesn't believe in putting a time frame on his feelings, but many fans wonder if he said too much too soon. Breaking the fourth wall. There's a lot of lingo contestants tend to use on the show in order to make things seem more organic. They'll refer to their time in front of the cameras as experience or a journey instead of straight up admitting that they were on a reality dating show. I'm happy I got to experience that with Peter. But unlike most members of The Bachelor Nation, Pete doesn't seem too worried about using the proper terminology during his season. When he was catching up with Hannah, he blatantly referred to a portion of their past together as an episode. I was at my aunt's house watching that live last episode. The producers would have probably preferred that he talk about their journey together instead. Peter breaking the fourth wall may be unusual, but there are some fans who find it refreshing. After all, we all know we're talking about a television program, so why can't the contestants talk about it? This bachelor definitely isn't keeping quiet about anything, from how many women he's kissed to the fact that he's part of a reality show. Not seeing families. Meeting your date's family is a big step in real life, and it can be a definite deal breaker on the show as well. This episode was a first in The Bachelor history for a really awkward reason. Victoria Fuller decided to take Peter to a Hunter Hayes concert, which was a lot of fun until his ex, Marissa, showed up. She claimed to share mutual friends with Victoria and had some bad news for Peter. There's been many relationships broken up because of her and... Marissa advised Peter against pursuing a relationship with Victoria, which definitely put a huge damper on their date. For the first time ever, a bachelor broke protocol by skipping a visit with a date's family. He wanted to talk to Victoria about what he had heard from Marissa, and she did not take it well. Thanks to all of the drama, Peter ended up leaving early on family day. This may have gone against the format of the show, but at least it's got Peter and Victoria to agree that their communication needs a lot of work. Holton all alone. Peter Weber has definitely broken more than his share of rules during his time on The Bachelor, but he's not the only rebel when it comes to finding true love. Come on, you know we have to talk about Colton Underwood. Usually, bachelors are expected to take no for an answer when they get rejected, but Colton just couldn't let go of Cassie Randolph. He begged her to stay on the show, and when that didn't work, he actually chased after her. He jumped over a fence, momentarily ditched the cameras, and went after the girl of his dreams. Okay, it does sound kind of romantic, but even Colton admitted he had to throw out all the rules of the show in order to follow his heart. Since he didn't finish out the show in the proper format, Colton technically didn't pick a winner. But since he and Cassie ended up together, we have a feeling he isn't too upset about it. Some rules exist for good reasons, but this couple got together by refusing to follow protocol. We're enjoying dating right now. Yeah. I love you. I love you might just be three little words, but they're a really big deal to most of us. That's why the majority of bachelors hold off on saying them until they choose the one person they want to be with. But it doesn't always work out that way. Peter tried to hedge his bets by telling Madison and Hannah that he was falling in love with them, but Colton just went for it before the finale. And I'm sitting here telling you that I'm in love with you. And just in case she didn't get it the first time, he actually said it again. I care for you. I love you. I want to be you at the end of this. Considering that shortly after this, Colton leapt over a fence to pursue her, it's not surprising he just couldn't hide his feelings any longer. It may be frowned upon to say I love you too soon, but Colton proved that sometimes it's worth the risk. First Impression Rose Making a good first impression is important, especially when you're a contestant on The Bachelor who's trying to stand out. 
But some people go a little too overboard trying to earn the coveted first impression rose. Oh my god, I'm impressed. Even though everyone tries their best to start off on the right foot, there's always been one contestant who won the initial flower and the whole show. That person is Catherine Giudici, who won the 17th season and Sean Lowe's heart. They're currently married with three children, but to get there, Sean had to break some of the rules. Instead of waiting for the official rose ceremony, Sean just started giving out flowers. I heard that there's like three roses already. This made it much more likely for someone to earn the first impression rose, but Sean ended up choosing his wife anyway. Handing out flowers isn't quite as dramatic as hopping over a fence, but thankfully, Catherine and Sean got their happy ending. Do you think The Bachelor leads should follow the show's guidelines, or does breaking these rules make for better TV? Let us know down in the comment section. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel, and thanks for stopping by The Taco. Bye for now.